Uh, well, welcome to this webinar, uh, focusing on the Turks and Caicos Islands, um, part of our series of financial centers of the world. Um, and an interesting one today, it's a small uh, island center, uh, doesn't yet feature in the Global Financial Centers Index, but is an associate center, which means that it is on the way uh, to being listed in the GFCI. Um, we have with us today David Stewart, Managing Director of Coriat's Trust Company Limited. Um, David's had a career in the law, uh, mostly in the UK, um, has been in uh, the Turks now since 2015, but also was telling me he spent some time in Turks um, also uh, early in his career. And so this is a return to uh, the island life uh, for David, and he's going to be our main presenter today. Um, as <clears throat> By way of an agenda, um, this is my welcoming remarks. I'm Mike Wardle, uh, Head of Indices for the ZN Group. Uh, we'll be hearing from David uh, really an overview of um, you know, what Turks and Caicos has to offer as an international financial centre, and we will have time for Q&A at the end. Um, for those of you who hadn't joined one of our webinars before, webinars before uh, the questions uh, are asked by typing them into the system. You'll find a question uh, tab on the uh, go to webinar dashboard, which is uh, up on your screen. Uh, so you can type a question in there uh, at any time during the webinar um, and we'll uh, try and pick off as many as we can uh, towards the end of the session. We've allowed sort of 40 to 45 minutes in total um, if we need them. And um, I'm really looking forward to hearing a bit about a, um, a centre we don't often hear much about in Europe um, and which looks, I guess, more to America at the moment uh, in terms of its market. So without further ado, David, over to you um, for your presentation on the financial centre and financial markets in Turks and Caicos. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate the intro and, and hello to everyone who's, uh, who's uh, joining uh, the webinar. Uh, today. So my purpose really is for those who um, aren't <clears throat> here in the Turks and Caicos um, and who are curious about uh, the jurisdiction, who want to know a little bit about what it is in terms of its constitution, its legal system, um, to talk to you a little bit about that. To start with a very short introduction um, about me. So I've been uh, back in the Turks and Caicos for five years uh, now, my fifth anniversary was uh, was May this year um, and during that time I've had uh, a lot of fun, um, uh, a lot of sun, um, a hurricane which blew my house over um, and uh, I bought um, a business, Coriax, which is the oldest trust company here in the Turks and Caicos Islands, been in business for 42 years um, and I'm also a, a, an attorney at law in the Turks and Caicos admitted to practice here and I am a partner in uh, Griffiths and Partners um, and Coriax is part of the GMP group, which is the largest um, professional services group here in the Turks and Caicos. Um, and we have a company management team, uh, a full service law firm with litigation, real estate, corporate, commercial, etc. And then uh, Coriax, which is uh, a full service uh, boutique trust company with legal, compliance, accounting, and other resources. We look after knocking on the door of half a billion dollars worth of AUM for a wide range of uh, uh, ultra high net worth families. Uh, and we provide corporate and uh, fam wealthy family uh, office services to um, clients all over the world. Um, it's a hugely varied and enjoyable role. So I think that um, uh, another part of my role in the Turks and Caicos is to work with government in particular with um, uh, the uh, Finance Industry Association and with the Minister of Finance to uh, help promote the jurisdiction, uh, to increase the number of practitioners who live and work here and to make coming here for those who are looking at potentially locating their business in a tax neutral jurisdiction to make that as easy as possible. And in that regard, we have a number of initiatives which I'll go on to mention. Uh, so really, it's a, uh, my, my role here is to uh, promote the Turks and Caicos Islands and to encourage those of you who haven't heard about the Turks and Caicos or who don't know about the Turks and Caicos to explore um, the uh, jurisdiction as a potential location for either a structure or for your business um, as we uh, open our doors and encourage uh, inbound investment with renewed vigour, which is what we are, I am charged to do by the Premier and Minister of Finance here in the Turks and Caicos. 
So if we can just start with a few stats, Mike, if I could ask you to just click on the first um, couple of slides so we get to the first listing. So Grace Bay Beach, just very briefly, that is um, commonly ranked at number one or number two in the world's best beaches, and for good reason. It really is an astonishing turquoise uh, vision of gorgeousness with bright white sand going on for miles and miles. So uh, uh, it is well worth a visit uh, if that's all you do as a result of this webinar, is come here to visit. Um, I very much encourage you to go to Grace Bay because it's gorgeous. So if we go on to the, 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 the stats, uh, I'll just trot through these as, uh, as quickly as I can. Um, uh, so the Turks and Caicos like BVI and Cayman is a BOTC. There are 33 islands and keys, but um, uh, the main population lives on uh, Providenciales, which is the island I'm on right now, um, and that's the main tourist destination. The former, the, the capital island is Grand Turk, that also has a population of about 10,000 uh, here on uh, Providenciales, but a population pretty similar to Grand Cayman of about 40,000. Um, and then we have uh, a, a few other family islands that have small populations of around one to 2,000. Um, we're located very close to Miami. It's about an hour and 15 minutes flying time to Miami or Fort Lauderdale, 100 miles southeast of the Bahamas, pretty close to Haiti and to Cuba. Um, we have a, a stable uh, multi-party democracy, again, like the BBI and, and Cayman. Um, uh, the constitutional status uh, is as a British overseas territory. So that means that we have a governor who has real responsibility for uh, foreign uh, policy, uh, border control, policing, and financial services. But the vast majority of the rest of the business of government is delegated to an elected legislature called the House of Assembly. So, a very strong economy. It's one of the strongest economies in the Caribbean with a, a strong growth rate in 2018. Um, in fact, the, GD, the latest GDP numbers are knocking on the door of a billion dollars. Um, significant levels of budget surplus, uh, around 100 million of cash salted away. But um, the Southern Caicos is very tourism dependent, unusually so. In fact, in a study from uh, uh, um, KPMG uh, recently, the, uh, we, are, we are the second most tourism dependent economy in the world after the Maldives. So COVID has certainly hit us. Um, and that, I think, has led to a renewed focus on the need to try and improve uh, uh, the, the balance, the, the diversification of our economy, hence the focus on uh, the uh, investing in uh, the financial services industry and creating conditions that encourage people to come here to invest and to start businesses. Um, most beautiful places on earth, um, and we have a number of we have a large number of visitors. That number is slightly flattered by the, um, the cruise ship terminal we have, not on Providenciales, but in Grand Turk. The, the, um, the average recovered wrap rate, which is a, a measure of just how, putting it brutally, pricey you are as a tourism destination, last year was $600 a night. That's really, really high for the Caribbean and puts us in the sort of St. Bart's uh, mystique level of uh, visitor. That's we've got the highest number of private jet movements, for example, in the Caribbean pretty consistently. Um, and we have a very sort of high net worth clientele who come here, not exclusively high, but a, but a very substantial number of wealthy uh, celebrities uh, and other high net worth clientele. And it, it really is, um, a brand that resonates well, particularly in North America, for quality, uh, luxury, and exclusivity. And that, I think, plays well to the family office and boutique trust business, um, and certainly plays well with my business. Um, we could move on to another slide, please. I'd be grateful. Um, and then the, um, uh, yeah, uh, the good quality credit rating, triple B plus for the Caribbean, that's excellent. No debt, the government here has, has zero debt. How long that will continue for, I don't know, um, given the, the cha challenges that COVID has presented to us. We um, have now begun to see the air come back as the hotels start to reopen, but, um, and we confidently expect that it will come back. There's a lot of capital deployed here. A lot of people want to still, still want to come on 
vacation. Um, it's one of the best airlifts in the Caribbean. We have direct flights to Chicago, Atlanta, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, uh, four a day to Miami, and Fort Lauderdale, Charlotte, uh, Toronto twice a day. So it's a very well-connected um, island, very easy to get backwards and forwards and relatively inexpensive on commercial flights. And we have a British Airways flight uh, that came in, uh, twice a week to London via, in our case, uh, Antigua. Um, the success of the economy and the growth of the economy here uh, has led to the development of infrastructure which underpins it, which makes it a very lovely place to live and work. It uh, has great schools, uh, good health care provided by a um, Canadian uh, 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 company called Interhealth, um, good shops, restaurants, um, and a very good quality of, of life. And that is one of our key attracting uh, uh, points of attraction. Again, for investors who want to come here, it's easy to recruit to the Turks and Caicos. And generally speaking, when people come here, they stay for a long time. They love living here. Um, and that is um, a, a really unique selling point um, for uh, uh, those who want to start businesses. Um, and we also have, uh, for the financial services sector, uh, uh, a particular focus on protecting and enabling people to come here and to start up um, businesses. Um, in relation to eligibility for permanent residency and work permits. So that's part of what the government is focusing on with the private sector uh, to make sure that, that is as straightforward as possible. If we could just move on to the next slide, please, that'd be great. Um, and I think that we'll go back to see um, uh, in the next one, please, a, a focus on um, uh, you know, the, 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 the diversification of our economy. The, the, the move to grow the financial services sector comes um, uh, after um, a, a period where we really focused um, on real estate development and on tourism, particularly on this island, Providencia and others, and to the detriment of uh, financial services. So um, the next decade, we expect as a, as, a, as a nation to be investing a lot more energy, time and focus in creating a brand for financial services that's discernibly different to the incumbent um, BOTC brands of Cayman and BVI. And to do that, we're going to be focusing on transparency and integrity of our structures, of our regulation, and to be at the top end of compliance with the international uh, um, armies of sometimes contradictory regulators who uh, purport to regulate us. So that's going to be an interesting voyage for us, um, and we've already begun. Um, financial services is a big chunk of our economy, uh, but most of that 9% in the slide is of domestic financial services. Um, we have all the major Canadian banks here, World Bank of Canada, Scotia, FDIB, formerly Barclays, but we also have some independent banks, and I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, we've got a very, we're lucky enough to have a very good regulatory regime with uh, a very collaborative and proportionate um, regulator. We have a relatively um, simple set of offshore IFC products here in the Turks and Caicos, um, and the regulator is working hard with the private sector to make sure that regulation and legislation is in place to support the transparent uh, uh, and proper development of um, financial services. So it is a, a hungry jurisdiction with a collaborative regulator that is um, willing to work with the private sector to make uh, the business and sector grow here. And that's a really important team, play, part of the team that we have on the on, on the um, uh, overall group that's focusing on trying to grow the financial services business here. As with BVI and Cayman, we have no uh, direct taxation of any kind, no income, inheritance, capital gains, corporation or personal taxes. If you live and work here, there's a small payroll tax which is capped out at a modest level to pay for national health um, and uh, a national insurance scheme for pensions but it is really uh, um, nominal uh, relative to uh, any first world country. Uh, there are no exchange controls. We have 
US dollar as our currency. We don't have our own currency or our, so it's all US dollar. Um, we have good ranking with um, OECD, our last um, Caribbean Financial Action Task for Force rating was uh, largely compliant. Um, we have some issues that we need to deal with, but in common with almost all of the jurisdictions that have been peer reviewed in the last couple of years, but we are very confident and comfortable that we can uh, improve on that uh, through the discussion process with CFADA. Um, we've enacted a great deal of legislation in the last three years in preparation for the push to grow our financial services industry. Uh, we've enacted a modern trust law, which is uh, uh, based in part on the Jersey law and in part on Cayman. We've also enacted um, a new companies ordinance, which was uh, based on the BVI ordinance, but with some improvements, and new insolvency regime, again, heavily based on the BVI ordinance. Um, and all of that backed up by widespread consultation locally. So all of that legislation is in place, modern um, and uh, 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 tried and tested, battle tried and tested in the BVI. Um, we've got full compliance with the EU uh, for economic substance. Um, our regime is much slower to launch than other regimes. So at the moment, we don't have a uh, substance registry that's imminent. We don't have notes, but we are um, uh, regarded as, and throughout the process were regarded as whitelisted by the EU. Um, Strong international banking community, RBC, First Caribbean. We've also got Bordier, which is a large um, Swiss uh, private bank, uh, British Caribbean bank, uh, which, was, uh, 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 which is a, a major uh, presence here, and TCBC, which is a small, another small Swiss owned bank. Um, international accounting firms, KPFG, Grant Thornton, WB Financial, which has offices in Cayman and here. Um, uh, so it's a a great place to live and work. We have an excellent reputation, um, and uh, we don't. We are we're relatively clean skin. We don't have the Panama or Paradise paper baggage that uh, EBI and Cayman uh, have, uh, and other jurisdictions. And that's, um, I think, uh, a, a good basis for us to begin to build this focus on transparency uh, and integrity. If we go to the next slide, we'd be grateful. Uh, so, uh, next page, please. Um, so, why invest? And some of this is a bit repetitive. Uh, 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 so our super yacht um, uh, harbour, uh, which is uh, attracting an increasing number of cruising super yachts, again, consistent with our sort of five star uh, um, uh, reputation. So, uh, if you're looking to uh, choose a jurisdiction to invest in, Perhaps you're looking to set up a fund management business or uh, family office for a wealthy family um, that are multinational, um, or you're looking uh, to set up um, uh, any sort of administration or back office or a practitioner's business, a boutique trust company, law firm. Um, uh, this is uh, a really good jurisdiction to choose. The economy is strong, um, it, even though it's been badly affected by COVID, the uh, overwhelming majority of those surveyed by, um, in, in a local survey, believe that um, they'll be back to uh, good levels of occupancy and uh, uh, robust financial health in the early part of next year. Um, so from their lips to God's ears, and that still gives us a, a strong uh, economy with no debt uh, and with a significant amount of in the bank to tide us through this difficult next six months. A very pro-business investment climate, with government support at all levels, including uh, a special focus on the financial services sector um, and an active uh, private sector and government group, which uh, I sit on, looking at legislation. Um, and we have a number of legislative initiatives that we're discussing to make that even easier and even clearer. But at the moment, very much um, uh, open for business, and the investment agency invests TCI and um, the private sector are working together to make it extremely easy uh, and extremely welcoming to come to the Turks and Caicos and to invest. Uh, a very strong legal system with 
uh, rule of law that's akin again to Cayman and BBI. The ultimate court of appeal here is the UK Privy Council, um, and that, that strong uh, 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 court system, that strong uh, uh, rule of law, is ex enormously attractive to Latin American and Asian clients um, who are going to feel a great deal of comfort that they have backing um, any structure that they put in place in this case and chaos. Um, uh, easy access, first mover opportunities. At the moment, the financial services sector is very undeveloped uh, here. Uh, and there is, I think, considerable opportunity to grow here. I'm hugely uh, enthusiastic about encouraging new entrants. Um, we need more people to populate our step committees, our legislative committees for trust law, company law. We're really looking forward to uh, growing the jurisdiction and growing the number of practitioners who are IFC literate, internationally literate, whether they're accountants or fund managers or lawyers. So a lot of enthusiasm. Um, opportunities for residency and work permits. Um, and uh, for those who've got children, a great education system uh, that delivers a really high level of education it means that you can be confident that your children can be educated here up to the point where they leave for college. Um, to a very high standard, um, and that's very unusual uh, in the uh, in, in the IFC world. And a great quality of life, quality of life that really I think is unmatched anywhere in um, in the Caribbean. And we are certainly a, a testament, my family and I, a testament to that. We really enjoyed coming back here and had a wonderful five years, with the exception of the Hurricane Irma incident, which I won't dwell on. So if we go to the next page, please. I'm grateful. Um, so that's uh, uh, my business, Curiax. Uh, that's how to get hold of us, and that's our website. Um, and that really, uh, from my perspective, is uh, the end of uh, my presentation about the Turks and Caicos. Um, what I haven't touched on in that presentation is you know, my views about the future of IFCs, uh, whether um, we're going to be uh, able to weather you know, the weather as in WEATHR the current headwinds that we face um, and uh, how the world is going to change as a result of the COVID pandemic and the consequential need for governments to raise exponentially more tax revenue than they had budgeted or planned for. And that was all beginning to uh, uh, create a lot of uh, interesting opportunities for uh, those of us who live and work in the IFCs and I think it's going to be it's going to uh, create a very different world in the course of the next two or three years. So I'm very excited by it. It's certainly going to be very different, um, and I'm delighted to be involved in it. I think we've got a, a really interesting uh, a few years ahead. Um, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Mike uh, uh, and Zian, for the opportunity to speak on this webinar. And I'd be delighted to have a look at uh, any questions that. Might you and the team might have, or that any of those attending attending have uh, have got. Well, thank you very much, David. Um, <clears throat> fascinating to hear about somewhere we don't often hear uh, much about. Um, and um, I, I presume that the, the open offer to come and visit. Um, it's probably going to be more open next year than this. Uh, it's been an odd year for for uh, for long distance travel. I, I just uh, we have, have a for, for those who might want to come to, to visit. Um, we are open. Our borders are open. You need a COVID certificate, PCR uh, test that's five days old or less, um, and you need to go on to the TCI Assured portal where you can log on pre-clear. You need a basically you need medical insurance and a COVID test, and then you'd be welcome with um, uh, probably not open arms uh, and certainly a mask, but you'd be welcome. Well, thank you for that. Um, so we've got a couple of questions coming in. The first one, um, what are the rules and regulations on owning property? In other words, do you have to be resident to own property on the Turks or is it a mixed economy? There's absolutely no restriction on property ownership whatsoever. So all property sales or purchases. So um, unlike some, uh, unlike the Crown dependencies or BVI, you don't need to be certified. So it's it's um it's a very strong real estate market. Um, uh, uh, you know, last year there were 
transactions are valued at nearly $300 million, um, the annual value of the real estate market uh, here. It's, it's um, a very mixed market um, and it's well worth taking a look at. I recommend the it's it's a, a the the realtors here the estate agents club together and list all the properties on one website. Obviously, they have their own websites, um, and that tc.rea.com is well worth a look because you could see anything from a uh, hundred thousand dollar studio to um, I think the highest uh, price property at the moment is forty eight million dollars. Um, that's for a single family residence. Um, uh, and Bruce Willis recently sold his property for uh, mid-30 million. So, that, I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Um, and it, it goes quick. Uh, the high end is, is busy right now. Thanks for that. And um, it's an associated question. If you could just talk a bit more, give a bit more detail on residency, whether there's temporary and permanent kind of residencies, timescales mm -hmm. for getting residency, costs of getting residency, and do you receive some sort of um, TIN number? Someone says, Mark, I presume that's the sort of government identif identification number. Um, but just a bit more about what the process of becoming a resident. Um, yes, yeah, so the TIN is, is a reference to the tax identification number, which is the uh, which you don't get here because we haven't got any uh, tax uh, office to give you a TIN. Um, so you tick the box on your forms uh, saying, I'm, I haven't got a TIN here. Um, you can get a wide variety of residency certificates. The simplest way to get permanent residency, if that's what you want, is to buy a property um, uh, to a certain value. On this island on Providenciales, it's a million dollars, and that gets you permanent residency at the moment at a cost of 25,000 US dollars, one-off cost, and that's it. Um, moving from permanent residency to a higher level of status um, in a BOTC is possible, but it takes a long time and requires residency. And if anyone wanted any more advice than that, because it gets get quite complicated and quite boring if you're not interested in it, I'd suggest that they just send me a, a, a private message and I'm happy to give them a, a document we've got which explains uh, that. So, uh, but you don't have to head for permanent residency. If you're on the list, and it's a very long list of countries which um, we welcome without the need for a visa, you can get up to three months on arrival and extend, extend that for a further three months, but you won't have the right to work during that time um, unless uh, you obtain a, a work permit or a residency permit with the right to work. And again, uh, those are relatively straightforward to obtain, provided uh, you've got a sensible uh, business proposition um, and we're very happy to, to help you get those. So. Um, uh, the other way to get residency is on a temporary basis, which is renewable every uh, every, every couple of years, um, and that is much cheaper, it's $1,000 a year, if you just want to try out uh, the Turks and Caicos. Um, we're looking at legislation, which we hope to put in place in the near future, to um, uh, give a particular class of uh, investor uh, a much easier route to residency and uh, to be able to work for themselves and I'd expect that will be announced uh, in the next few months um, so there, there are moves afoot to yeah, emulate you know, what Rob Ados and others have done in terms of digital nomad style residency because um, uh, we want to encourage uh, uh, wealthy people to come and, uh, and live here and really wealthy people. I'm just kind of extending that further, I guess. The question is about you know, about the associated costs specifically in setting up and running a business um, you know, in the financial sector in the islands and how they might compare with you know, other islands in the Caribbean. In other words, is, is this a good place to, a, a cheaper place to set up a business than some places? Um, it's, uh, I can give good comparative stats with Cayman because I've got interest in Cayman and um, uh, in the process of looking to set up in Cayman as well. Um, and so I've, I've been to Kamana Bay and Georgetown, I can go a good handle on the rents, commercial rents, at least last year. So it's cheaper than Cayman um, by some margin to set up a business here, particularly my type of business. Um, just as an example, the regulatory fee for a fully licensed trust company in Cayman um, is uh, uh, 
uh, over $100,000 a year. It's a pretty hefty uh, fee here. Uh, the same fee is $10,000. And the statutory capital required, which means basically money that's stuck in a blocked account, is $600,000. And um, uh, here it's $100,000. Uh, in terms of commercial property, Commander Bay rents are chunky now, and um, the pandemic might have softened them. Uh, so if you want to be in Commando Bay, it's very expensive, and it's certainly a lot more expensive than it would be to rent here uh, in the Turks and Caicos. Georgetown is, is you know, cheaper because there's a lot of uh, excess capacity. BVI I'm less confident about, but um, the, uh, it, it, I would say we're probably on a par with BVI in terms of costs, maybe slightly uh, cheaper here. It's certainly easier, in my experience, to recruit to the Turks and Caicos because DVI can be quite challenging to get backwards and forwards from and it's quite isolated once you're there so for younger families that can be a bit, bit off-putting and then going back to Cayman of course the other big cost difference is, is the work permit fee Cayman a senior professional or director is paying um, 30 plus uh, thousand dollars a year for a work permit whilst here that's 10,000 so overall I'd say the regulatory fees business uh, work permits and so forth are cheaper here. The cost of living is similar because uh, rent, uh, domestic rents um, and uh, food going out, et cetera, are all pretty expensive in, in all of the overseas territories because uh, they grow very little of their own food and, and they have to import everything. And the only way government can raise revenue is um, on consumption to on charge and duty on Food and drink. So it is the cost of living is reasonably high. I, I equate the cost of living for those who come from my city, London, and my cultural background. It's a bit like living in, you know, sort of Chelsea in terms of rents and food um, uh, costs. Um, so it's not horrendous, but it's certainly uh, uh, not cheap. But then, of course, you're not paying any significant taxes. I guess um, the next question is a bit about um, the effects that the COVID crisis has had on the island. I mean, a lot of island centres have been sort of slightly protected from the, um, you know, the worst of the, the disease, but obviously has a big effect on uh, travel and uh, for those economies like yours, which are dependent on tourism to a large extent. Um, so wh where are you placed at the moment in terms of the effect of the COVID crisis? I think we've handled the COVID crisis well. We've been very grateful to the UK government who sent us uh, experts from public health, England, um, and a significant amount of material, um, in, including ventilators and other equipment, and helped us recruit and augment our existing team of 20 professionals here from Cuba, which is just 80 miles away uh, at its nearest point to us. Um, and we've got UK medical professionals here too, uh, along with um, uh, logistical support from uh, from the UK military. So we're we're prepared. Um, we've had a, a number of COVID cases, not from tourism, not from tourists, but largely in the local community, but a very low level of ill health as a result. So one of the puzzles, which is for epidemiologists and others much more qualified than me to explain, is why we we have a, a relatively a high level of penetration of COVID. Um, so far, we've got around 600 cases, and about 400 of those, 400 of those are active, and 200 recoveries. But why we have, um, a, 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 you know, relatively speaking, a large number of cases, uh, but so few have been um, Ill, Ill, Ill enough to be hospitalised. And so, but we're very grateful for that. So we're doing aggressive tracking and tracing, and we're reducing the day rate of infections um, slowly but clearly that is going down and we hope to be in the same position as uh, Cayman with uh, an eradication of the disease or at least a, having it under significant control um, in the near future. The question then is how we leverage that because we've got the opportunity then to um, offer people a very um, safe uh, environment um, and I would say that right now today provided you observe sensible precautions you are far safer here in the Turks and Caicos than you would be um, in uh, in the United States and that's certainly the conclusion a lot of wealthy families have come to who have relocated here on a semi-permanent basis to wait out the pandemic 
Now, I can say all of that um, with authority, but of course, I've got zero qualification to, uh, to give those uh, give those opinions um, before anyone leaps down my throat, as they probably should. But um, so that's how I feel. I feel safe here. And we take sensible yeah. approach. It's, it's um, we're in good shape. Um, I think as, as an economy, um, it's hit us hard. Um, uh, um, 85% of our GDP is connected to our real estate industry, uh, that is building expensive villas and hotels uh, for tourism and our tourism industry. Um, and it's been a major uh, hit to government revenues and to uh, the domestic economy. We flex very well. We're a community that's used to dealing with difficult situations. Hurricane Zerma and Maria uh, were very significantly uh, impacted us physically. Um, three years ago, we pulled together and we don't panic. And uh, overall, there's a strong sense of community. And that sense of community is supporting the uh, population and making sure that people who need help are getting help. Um, so I'm confident that we'll ride it out. And I'm also confident that the level of capital deployed here means that um, uh, we will come back um, uh, early next year and that the economy will recover. But it's, there's no doubt it's been pushed back. For my, in my view, that gives uh, um, businesses like mine and businesses that are thinking of coming here an opportunity because um, it's certainly shaken government uh, um, out of any sense of complacency, if they had any, um, that uh, there's an urgent need to diversify the Turks and Caicos economy. And that is now part of the political language in the Turks and Caicos from both political parties. And there is real enthusiasm from both political parties to deliver on that um, and to uh, offer good quality employment and to grow a sector away, uh, that, is, that is less uh, dependent on tourism. So I think that that's a good sign, and that's going to um, get, give momentum and vigor to this campaign that we are running to to grow the sector. And I guess a question: So, how much room for expansion do you have in sort of the financial services um, arena? And which kind of which, which what are you targeting? In other words, if you had the ideal um, investor uh, waiting in the wings, what would they look like? <laughs> Um, they would be uh, it, it, be pretty from three buckets. One, uh, a recognised uh, existing brand in another IFC or Crown Dependency somewhere, POTC, who wanted to uh, locate in the Caribbean and was looking for uh, a jurisdiction that was was uh, perhaps uh, 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 fresh and clean skin like us. That would be great. Seize them with open arms, give them a, a really big welcome, and make sure that they had a great experience locating here. Um, they would be trustees, um, uh, at maybe uh, one of the magic circle offshore law firms, um, uh, fund managers, anyone to do involved in the provision of international financial services um, who wanted to be located in a tax neutral jurisdiction. Uh, the second bucket would probably arrive arise from. The existing industry that is here, which is the U US facing small and medium sized captive insurance market, there's a lot more innovation and a lot more opportunity, I think, to grow that market away from the relatively commoditized products that we now provide. And, and I'm very excited about that. I'd love to see some thought leadership and bigger and entrepreneurialism coming from. A US or Canadian provider, I think, who would be interested in growing a business from here and creating some new products and some new uh, opportunities. And then the, uh, I suppose the, the, the final uh, bucket would be uh, uh, entrepreneurs um, or, or, and funds that are looking to capitalize on um, economically, uh, so uh, a green tech and um, socially responsible investment that aligns with the Turks and Caicos' brand as beautiful by nature and that is, um, we are a, a nation that is very focused on ecological um, uh, uh, integrity and making sure that we preserve the beauty of our beaches and our reefs. And so we're very keen to encourage um, brands that are and funds and investors that are focused in that part of uh, uh, the investment community to consider the Turks and Caicos as somewhere to locate 
because our overall national brand aligns well with them. And we're already seeing a number of events and visitors here uh, that are capitalizing on that commitment to uh, um, keeping the island as beautiful uh, as it currently is, uh, notwithstanding the growth that we've experienced in the last few years. So those are the sort of three areas where we believe we could see uh, some growth. And certainly, we, 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 we don't want to be all things to all people. We, we're very small. We can only credibly really cover uh, expansion in, in, in some targeted sectors. But we really want some people to come in and found those uh, sectors, build those reputations, and we'll support and encourage them to do that. David, that's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Um, and another question is just, you just really just answered the question before we've asked it. You know, what are the opportunities for family offices and asset managers to establish in Turks? I mean, obviously, this, this is the, the real area where you know, you've got expertise on the island. Um, and where uh, you've got the people who could who could you know, f fill posts in in new businesses. Yeah, I mean we've got a great workforce. Um, uh, certainly, uh, a lot of a good quality, uh, uh, well educated um, uh, local uh, professionals who you can recruit and train. You've got uh, relevant experience, and you've got um, you know, significant academic and work credentials. Usually. Uh, again, from work experience in the UK. Bear in mind that um, if you are, uh, uh, if you have Islander status uh, and a Turks and Caicos passport, you're also entitled as a right to a UK passport, and that makes immigration to the UK um, a, a seamless. And education support from the government has been available for many years. So we have a very well-educated, highly skilled population, um, and certainly right now there's more opportunity to recruit good quality people as the uh, hotel, tourism, and real estate industry is shedding jobs. And so there is, um, I think, a great opportunity to staff up. We've got great property opportunities. There are certainly, uh, there's certainly office space that's uh, open uh, um, and inexpensive and available right now. There's uh, encouragement from the regulator uh, and from uh, the legislature to enact new statutes or to amend existing statutes and I'm very much involved in uh, doing that um, through the Bar Council here and through the company and trust law committees, all of which um, I'm involved with. So um, a lot of enthusiasm from regulator, from government um, and uh, from the private sector to grow uh, the industry. Here. So uh, I couldn't be more welcoming. Uh, and I don't think the opportunity will ever be as good here as it is now. Um, and I think that that, that aligned with an increase in demand, which I predict will follow the need to clobber the rich, because there is no nice way of putting it. Um, uh, you know, Rishi Sunak and uh, all of the other uh, 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 poor politicians responsible for balancing the books are going to have to find ways to increase the tax revenues of uh, the countries that have expended vast sums of money on. Uh, QE and furlough, and the general sense is that that's going to have to be through increases in capital gains, inheritance tax, and decreases in pensions allowances. So that's all going to create, I think, opportunities um, as the social contract between taxpayer and government starts to tip uh, uh, over um, the line where you know, people are actually prepared to pay some money to, to structure things differently. Um, so I think that the, there's some great opportunities. Um, and I really encourage people to contact me if they would like to explore those. I'm very happy to speak to anyone who'd like to know more and, and, and how they can progress that application. Uh, David, that's thanks. That's great. And uh, we'll put your um, email address in the uh, follow-up email we send out to people um, so they can get in touch with you uh, if they didn't take a note of it when you had it up on screen. Um, we've really run out of time, I'm afraid, um, and so it just remains for me to uh, do some thank yous. First of all, uh, to thank our sponsors um, who let us range quite widely over the fields of finance and technology and innovation and other uh, interesting matters. Uh, we really are grateful uh, to them for their support um, and for allowing us to uh, present um, sessions such as we've had today. Uh, the second thing, of course, is to uh, remind you um, that the Global Financial Centers Index 
um, is due out at the 28th edition is due out in September. If you wanted to rate Turks and Caicos along with other financial centres uh, in the survey, please do um, take a look at the survey. The uh, note is up on the uh, on the screen at the moment, um, and you know, <clears throat> we we love a wide variety of opinion uh, in all the surveys we run. Um, and finally, to thank the audience for uh, turning up. Um, and most of all, David, thank you for your presentation, your thoughts, uh, your willingness to share uh, what's going on in the islands at the moment um, after you've bounced back from hurricane disasters. Um, it's It's been really good to, to hear from you. Uh, in a normal uh, event of this type, you would have a round of applause at this moment. I'm afraid you're going to have to do with a very small round of applause uh, just for myself, um, but you'll have to take that as a virtual um, uh, thanks from the rest of the audience um, for your time and your engaging uh, talk today. So thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Thank you. And thanks to you, Mike, and to uh, ZN, and thanks to uh, everyone who's, um, who's uh, listened. And yeah, dscorex.com, happy to answer any questions. Um, and uh, uh, just to, you know, to say, it's from a personal perspective, uh, it's been uh, the most wonderful move for me to come here, and I really would encourage anyone who's thinking about locating a business to uh, seriously consider the Turks and Caicos as uh, uh, their next uh, uh, location. It's, um, uh, uh, they won't regret it. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you very much, and thanks all. Bye-bye.